On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have the final results from the Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash. Our correspondents check in from around the island and we have a list of upcoming events and we tell you what boats are still sailing. Stay tuned. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is Thursday, December 29th, and well, I hope all you guys had a great holiday. I did myself. Lots of good food, lots of good seafood on Christmas Eve. We like to keep the tradition up. We're going to talk about a couple of the events coming up. First off, we have Striper Day on the 15th of January. It features plug makers, rod makers, tackle shops, clubs, organizations. That is put together by Surfcasters Journal. We'll also have a booth there giving away subscription, well, selling subscriptions, and we'll be giving away our promo items, which are BKK hooks and fish bites. Uh, a few weeks after that is the New York Boat Show. More details to come with that in the near future. Hey, just a reminder that the annual State Park dashboard permits are on sale now through March 31st. Additionally, the annual Comset fishing permit goes live on Wednesday, January 4th at 9 a.m. Be sure to get on this because only 500 are available and they sell out right away. For more information, check out the link in the description below. And remember, there are no in-person sales for the permits this year. By now, all you subscribers out there will have received your January issue of the Fisherman Magazine. It has the Boat Buyers and Outboard Motor Guide in it. Uh, great issue. Again, there's so many different boats in here. If you're in the market for a new boat, check out this issue, front and back, plenty of options. Uh, and that's in the glossy section. As well as that, there's also a, a great article in here about plug building from my uh, co-worker Dave Anderson. And an article I wrote myself about women in fishing where I went around and asked a few women that I know around the island a, a few questions about why they got into fishing and what inspired them. Check out the January issue of the Fisherman Magazine. Well, over 10 years ago, Superstorm Sandy created a breach, an inlet, a, um, a uh, entryway in the Fire Island, Barrier Island on the federal side. Uh, we like to refer to it as the new inlet. Um, ironically, 10 years after that inlet opened up, a, uh, it actually sanded up and closed up right after Halloween this year. And I actually wrote an editor's log about it in the December issue of the Fisherman Magazine. It was titled, End of an Era for Now After the Water Passing Through a Completely Shut Off. If you fished it, you knew there was great fishing there. I fished it myself. It was an excellent place to fish. Ironically, the recent storm that we just had punched a hole back in it and breaches open again. Uh, we'll see how long it stays open for. You know, we have some more storms potentially coming up in the future over the winter. We'll see if a channel forms. More to come on that. Let's get the final results for our year-long Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash challenges. The 2022 Dreamboat Challenge has concluded with two former grand prize winners duking it out. When the dust settled, we found ourselves looking at a unique finish. Former winner Garrett Weir pulled some ninth inning heroics with a mammoth 17.85 pound blackfish right out of the end of the competition, which put him in second place overall behind another former champion, Sam Dibner. One of the rules of the Dreamboat Challenge is that former winners of the grand prize cannot win it again. So the Steiger Craft 23 Miami powered by a Yamaha 200 horsepower outboard defaults to the next person on the leaderboard who has not previously taken home the grand prize. That person was Connecticut resident Rob Carrizano. Congratulations, Rob. And also our fourth place winner, Bill DaCosta, and to all the anglers who participated. Of course, there would be no dream boat without our sponsors, Steigercraft, Yamaha, Hummingbird, Minn Kota, Marina Pez Vela, Engel, Finnor, Accurate Reels, Global Fish Mounts, Tsunami, Sea Eagle, Dexter, Owner, and Orion. For a complete dream boat overview, go to thefisherman.com or pick up a copy of our January issue. And as for the Coastal Kayak Clash, the winner is Justin Oser. Second place winner is Bob Wagner. And third place winner is Tom Howd. These kayak anglers competed throughout the region in what was an epic battle. Here are the final standings. For the full story, go to thefisherman.com or pick up the January issue of the Fisherman Magazine. Special thanks to Hobie Kayaks, Hummingbird, Penn, Fenwick, Yak Lights, Malone, and Yak Attack. In sad news, Ed Kopak, 73 of Aquabog, passed away recently. He was the longtime owner of Warren's Tackle Shop in Aquabog. Uh, Warren's was a staple on the North Fork of the island. A funeral mass will be held at St. John's Church in Riverhead at 10 a.m. on Friday. He will be missed dearly.
The Fisherman Magazine has launched their apparel store, hats, sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts, all online now and free shipping with orders over $100. It's the perfect gift for yourself. Visit thefishermanmagazine.com slash shop or click on the card in the upper right. If you're still looking to get out fishing this next week, you should know there's a bunch of boats still sailing right now. Uh, here are a few of them. The King Cod in Santa Mauritius has been sailing. Hampton Lady in Shinnecock, the Viking in Montauk, Laurelie in Captree, the Superhawk in Point Lookout, and the Captain Lou in Freeport. They've still been targeting sea bass, which is open to the end of the year. Slot Cod, Pollock, Porgies, and anything else that swims along the bottom. Make your reservations, hop on one of these boats, and put some fillets in the freezer for the winter. Also, some other fishing options happen to be on the freshwater side of things. You can hop over to Connect Quad State Park. Remember to make your reservations the day before for a four-hour session in the morning or in the afternoon. That's fly fishing only, of course. Aside from uh, Connect Quad State Park, you do have some of the local lakes. Um, again, they're, they're going to be thawing out. They were iced over from the recent cold, but they now are thawing out. And usually after a good thaw, the fishing is pretty good. Grab some live minnows, some freshwater worms, grab a float, a hooks, head over to the lake. There might be some trout, some bass, some pickerel biting. All great options. If you catch anything, send your pictures and we'd love to see them. Don't forget that this video is available as a podcast on iTunes and Google Podcasts. Search for the Fisherman Magazine podcast and subscribe so you can listen to the broadcast and other content. Now let's check in with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thanks, Matt. Well, greetings. Coming to you here from historic Nantucket in front of the historic Nantucket Whaling Museum. Take a little side break from Montauk this week. Um, basically, not a ton of reports going on uh, with Christmas and all that, but the Viking and the Miss Montauk are fishing up until New Year's Eve. So they're doing mixed bag, um, Block Island, South of Block Island, sea bass, cod, and blackfish. So call call up for reservations and get on their websites for reports um i know they've been fishing the last couple days i tried getting some information but they have been going and the weather's good so it's a good shot to get some fish all right everybody happy new year and we'll see you in the new year thank you matt from shinnecock let's check in with mike dean thanks matt hey everyone hope it was a uh, great christmas great holiday season so far with still a little little bit to go this weekend uh for everybody uh, i know a few of us going through some pretty you know, the, the, the top of the fishing gear that we got. So in uh, January of 2020, right before the pandemic hit, I uh, had ordered a custom rod from Haskell's in East Quag, kind of a splurge for my 50th birthday. And it was just a really awesome going through exactly what I wanted, something to fit in between an eight foot GSB kind of bay rod and 11 foot um, llama glass, two to five ounce that I used off the beach that was, uh, it always fit the bill, but was a little heavy. I wanted to uh, finally get like a really nice one piece that had a bit of a, some good casting distance to it. So we went through everything. Those guys have built a ton of custom rods over the years. Um, but then the pandemic hit. So between the supply chain, between the unbelievable, um, you know, uh, amount of people looking to get into fishing, carrying on operations at the store, a seafood operation they have, um, it wasn't able to get completed until a few weeks ago and here it is built on a gsb 1081l blank ergonomic uh, fuji reel seat upside down so after the cast if you have to adjust it's right there versus being on the bottom and some really nice finishing touches hopefully this will come out on here haskell's my logo you always want to have your name on everything <laughs> so um i cannot wait to use this thing uh, those guys are great, just like unbelievable craftsmanship, and uh, it's just awesome that I finally got this thing. And uh, so many thanks to uh, to the crew at Haskell's, Nick, and uh, and Pete. And uh, I just this is gonna make it tough to get through the off season waiting to get a few stripers on this. It's uh, rated um, to two and a half at like one and a half sweet spot. So nice bucktail with the. Fat cow jig strip on it for, for some of those bass off the beach. I just can't wait. So hopefully Santa was good to you. I'm wishing everyone all the best for 2023. I think it's going to be an awesome fishing season and an awesome year for everyone. So um, I'll talk to you soon. Back to you, Matt. From the Fire Island in Great South Bay area, we have Captain Al Barnzetti. Hey, Matt. 
Uh, weekend coming up is New Year's Eve, so we're at the end of the year. The bay is pretty much iced in, no fishing really going on, a little bit of duck hunting here and there, but the ice has made it tough. So end of the year, just want to wish everybody a happy holiday and looking forward to next year, 2023. It's going to be great, I'm sure. So Matt, we'll keep up with the reports and talk to you soon. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, I hope everybody had a good Christmas. I know I did. Even with this cold weather, even though everybody we had sickness in the house and it was kind of uh, not as many people as I'd like, but we had a great time. Uh, but I did get a lot to the time. I got, did get to my flight time bench. And at this time of year, with this cold weather, my fishing options are very limited. All the ponds are frozen. All the, uh, even the blackish water is frozen. Um, not enough to go ice fishing though, but uh, there is, there is uh, uh, fishing there. Uh, the Connect Quad, of course, is doing well. Uh, what can I say? It never freezes, but it is cold. Your line will freeze uh, and uh, there, your guides will freeze up, but there are fish to be had there. Uh, as far as also, you can also go to the tailwaters upstate. They're still open. Uh, but otherwise, it's pretty limited for now. But they're promising 50 degrees. Uh, we're getting 50 degrees weather. It's going to be pretty good this week. If the ponds thaw out a little bit, get out there. The pickerel are going to be very active. Um, but if you're like me, this is the time of year I spend a lot of my time tying flies. I really enjoy it. Um, it's it's a great hobby. It's something to be said to catch a fish on a fly you tie. Uh, I and and we are doing our fly tying classes, and uh, it's a great way to start. Uh, you're working with Pete. You they're Zoom. Most of them are Zoom classes, so you could do it at your own leisure. You also will get recordings. Uh, just. Go to riverbayoutfitters.com and on the front page, it explains well, what the classes are. It is going to be 10 weeks, two classes a week. You're going to tie a total of 80 flies, fresh, salt, warm water trout flies, all kinds of flies. Uh, it's a great way to learn. Uh, I hope to see you. We're going to be starting on the second week in January. So give me a call or at the shop. And uh, until next week, and Happy New Year's, everybody. Happy New Year's, and until next week, tight lines. From the Rockaways, we have Chris Landry. Chris. Thanks, Matt. Happy holidays and Happy New Year to everybody. I hope everybody got some good fishing presents this year. My kids got me a hat that says, Women love me and fish fear me, which is so true. I also got a Penn International 80 wide, which I'm super stoked about. Next year, I'm going to catch some giant bluefin tuna on it. Um, looking forward to that. I've still been catching some striped bass out in Brooklyn. I even caught a slot um, a few nights ago out in the cold. And I uh, went a couple nights later and only got tiny little schoolies. So they're still out there. They're just getting smaller and smaller and fewer and fewer. Um, I also wanted to thank everybody that took me out fishing this year, such as Bass Appeal, Mike from Frank's Fish Club, Polo Grounds, a.k.a. Polo Sportsman Official, uh, Wind Hole Charters, Karen Ann Charters, Jumpin' Mako, Sean Chody, Board of Fishing Friends, anyone I'm forgetting right now, um, Margarita. Um, and thank you to everyone that came out on my boat, everyone that I fish with. Uh, thank you to everyone that tuned into these reports and followed me on Instagram at BK Anglers. I'll still be fishing over the winter for some ghosts in, in, in Miami, so stay tuned for that. And thank you for tuning in, and uh, stay warm, tight lines, and back to you, Matt. Our new correspondent, David Rogers, checks in. Thanks, Matt. Let's get into it. Striped bass are still being caught at the mouth of rivers along the Sound. Dustin of Salty Hunter on YouTube provided us with this picture of a beautiful bass caught at one of the rivers that feed into the Sound. The key to getting these fish to bite is to go at night and use some eel imitations. Herring have been spotted by anglers cruising the rivers, but the herring schools are still spotty and I haven't seen anyone from land catching them as of yet. The temperatures have definitely dipped in the recent days, and that means herring fishing should start off at any moment. Here's my go-to setup for filling your pickling jars this winter season. 
I prefer using a medium inshore rod with a 2500 reel spooled with 15 pound braided line. Attached directly to the braid is a sabiki rig with an added flasher that helps attract herring. The rig has small hooks perfect for the little mouths. Finally, I attach a one ounce weight to ensure my rig gets to the bottom of the water column, which is where the herring like to hang out. Make sure to stay up to date with my fishing adventures by subscribing to Funky Fishing on YouTube. The weather outside is frightful, but the fishing can still be delightful. Happy New Year's everyone, and back to you Matt. Captain Mike Sentry has the latest from Staten Island. Thanks Tim and Matt, hope all is well. Hey guys, Mike Sentry here from Anglers of Legends Sport Fishing Boat Works. Well, 2022 is almost in the books, but Brad still pulling some teeth down South Jersey. Check out Brad and these uh, nice togs up to 30 inches, uh, caught and released. I believe this trip was uh, yesterday. So definitely shout out to Brad Becker for uh, these nice tog pictures. On the uh, home front, well, Christmas uh, has passed. Stocking stuffers, got some uh, gift cards for local tackle box and some other sporting goods stores. What else, what else, what else? I greeted myself with a second uh, pen authority 10,005 that's going to be a heavy spinning reel as you can see here in this photo for our large sharks and you know bigger tuna spinning so got two of those already in the books i'm pretty much wrapped up and uh that's about it so gotta go and uh i'll see you guys next week hopefully more talk pictures stay tuned and uh happy new year's and lastly we check in with captain ben gilmore from marina pez vela down in costa rica Hey there guys and a happy new year. This is Ben Gilmore from Marina Pez Vela, Costa Rica. We're experiencing a red hot billfish bite right now. The blue marlin bite 20 to 30 miles off the Marina Pez Vela has been nothing short of phenomenal the last few weeks. Lots and lots of blue marlin, many boats going out and catching two, three, four marlin in a day. We got a few striped marlin mixed in also and our sailfish bite has really picked up this week as well. Just in time for one of our biggest tournaments of the calendar, we got the Pelagic Rockstar happening over the 11th, 12th, 13th of January here at the Marina Pez Vela. It's going to be a big one. Last year, over a million dollars on the line. Let's see what happens this year, but we're expecting more than 80 boats. Don't miss this one, guys. We'd love to see you down here in Costa Rica. This is Ben Gilmore with Jackpot Sport Fishing. Us at the Fisherman Magazine would like to thank you for watching the weekly video fishing forecast for 2022. We look forward to giving you more broadcasts in 2023, and we'd like to thank our correspondents for contributing as well. Leave your comment below of your 2023 New Year's fishing resolution. Subscribe, leave your comments. We'll see you next year at the Fisherman Magazine.